Yeah, I think we are ready to start. Now with us is uh, Liz Thomas, who will be the moderator for the whole day. Liz Thomas from the Edge Hill University, basically the host of this event, because this uh, inclusiveness meetup is uh, organized by uh, Edge Hill University as part of the I Belong project. So Liz, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And welcome, welcome to this um, I Belong project, this meetup that we're having today. It's a little bit daunting to have so many people joining us from around the world, but also really very exciting. Um, and, and we really want to tell you all about our project and the things that we've been doing over the last three years. So hashtag I Belong is a, Europe a European project which is designed to improve the belonging and success of particularly non-traditional students in higher education. And we've introduced three interconnected interventions, which involve staff, students, and community mentors. And we'll tell you much more about those during the course of the day. And of course, we had to change many of those from in-person activities to online experiences. And part of what we want to do today is to share those with you so that you can understand more about how we did it, and hopefully you'll have some tips and ideas that you can take away. One of the things which we've done throughout this project is use personal stories, which we found to reduce power differentials, promote engagement, and, and to enable people to imagine their future selves. And so we hope that you've enjoyed the stories that we've shared so far in the introduction, and throughout the day we'll be sharing stories and encouraging people to do the same. We have had a really large number of registrations for the event, so we're live streaming. So you will be joining us through, through the, the link on our website, and you can interact with us through the, through the chat and the polls. You can see that there are two tabs. One is for the questions and answers, and one is for the polls. And the polls are the sort of the interactive bits that we'll pose and ask you to, to contribute to. And the chat is where you can put your questions up. So please do feel free to post questions and reflections. Some of my European colleagues are concerned about our interactivity, but we have a strong UK contingent here today. So I really hope that we'll be able to, um, you know, really show everybody that we've got lots to say about these issues and lots of reflections and questions to ask. So you, you have been able to post on, onto the website at the moment about where you've come from. It doesn't mean to do that. I can't now see the screen, but I think you'll be able to see that there are people from all over, all over Europe who've been able to join us. It's great to see so many people from Edge Hill, but also to see people from, from Turkey and Italy and Ireland and, and, and around. Um, and then we've also asked you some other questions around um, your expectations for the event. And, and if you could also tell us how you feel when you belong. And these are the kind of ways that we want you to interact. And I hope that that will give you a sense of the community that we, that we have here today. Um, I was asked to quickly give an overview of the program. So what we're going to do is, is we're kind of going to welcome you and, and welcome you to Edge Hill University. I know that you're not actually on our beautiful campus today. And we really hope that at some point we can welcome you to, to our green and beautiful campus in Lancashire. Um, but we are really giving you a warm welcome to our university in this virtual environment. And we're also going to tell you more about the hashtag I Belong project. We're then going to switch our focus to this kind of challenging context of pivoting to online and blended learning. And we've got two activities that we have converted from in-person to online, which we'd really like people to participate and learn from. We then have some breakout groups before lunch, which provide an opportunity for you to share your experiences and learn how others adapted to the online context. And I think that you'll find there again, there are things that you can take away and, and use in your own experiences. And then we have a, a, a lunch break. Um, and then after lunch, we have a student panel. So we have a chance to hear from students across Europe about their perspectives and experiences of of the lockdown experience of learning and being a university student. We then move our focus again onto the idea about developing the capacity of the whole team. Um, so we have some activities again that we've converted into an online environment that we've used in, in practice and we're going to try out with you today. 
and an activity designed to help staff explore diversity, power and, and difference. And then we've also got some reflections from colleagues in, in the partnership about their experience of embedding the hashtag I belong activities into our university and helping to make them much more sustainable. And then finally, we have a, a, another breakout session at the end of the afternoon, which is an opportunity to reflect together on some challenging situations, which again is, a, is an activity that we've been running with staff in our partner institutions. So I really hope that you'll enjoy the day. Um, lunch will be at 12 o'clock for those in, in the UK and in Portugal and other countries which are on British summer time, and at one o'clock for those in Central European time. So, and it will be for one hour. And we do recognize that some people will be fasting today, but please rejoin us on the live stream on the web link that you were using earlier at, at one hour afterwards. So it's either a one o'clock or two o'clock, depending on which part of the world you're in. So thank you very much for joining us. And I'm really pleased to be able to, to introduce now our pro vice chancellor from Ed Hill University, Linda Brady. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, many thanks Liz, um, and thank you for inviting me to do the opening for this conference. It really is a very great privilege actually um, to talk about something which is very close um, to all of our hearts on this call I'm sure, but also to us as an institution. Um, and so I'd also just like to say thank you for caring so much about this topic. Um, I think as Liz has said in, in the context of um, Today, it probably feels quite high stakes to those colleagues who are responsible for organising the event, uh, you know, concerns about technology, concerns about whether participants will, will fully engage uh, in the online environment. So um, just really encourage people um, to ensure that, you know, we all get the most out of today um, by giving the most we can to it. So thank you for doing that. Um, I don't think actually the focus of this conference could have come at a better time. Um, I think we are only now beginning to understand the impact that the last 12 months has had on individuals, communities and society as a whole. Um, and actually in the UK, uh, earlier this month, the Office for National Statistics issued a report um, and it focused on perceptions of life satisfaction and perceptions of loneliness. Um, and in the report, they actually stated that students rated their own life satisfaction at 5.2 out of 10. Um, and that's considerably lower than the adult population as a whole, which rated life satisfaction at a 6.8 out of 10. But perhaps more significantly, students reported that they felt lonely always or often 29% of the time. Uh, or sorry, 29% of students felt lonely always or often. Um, and that is far greater than the general adult population, which um, was 7% feeling lonely always or often. Now, of course, feeling lonely does not equate to being alone. And for many of our students, they will be living in student accommodation and multiple households. Um, so we might conclude from this that part of that feeling of loneliness isn't about being alone, but it is about perhaps being in a context where you don't feel comfortable and you don't feel that you belong. Um, so of course, for us as educators, that gives us concerns around student satisfaction, around their motivation and around their potential to actually succeed to their full extent. But there are much greater concerns and issues and long-term health consequences of feeling lonely. So it really is um, a very, very important topic for society as a whole. And for us at Edge Hill, actually, it is a topic that's very close to our hearts. We have always prided ourselves on being a university that actively uh, invites non-traditional higher education learners. So 70% of our students come from a background which is underrepresented in higher education more generally. And that's a source of pride to us because we really want to encourage the broadest possible student body. And we want to give opportunity to any individual that has the potential to, to succeed in higher education. But those students having put their faith in us, it's obviously incumbent upon us then to ensure we do everything to help them to succeed. That they feel that this is a place for people like them 
a place where they are valued and where they belong and where they can make a real contribution to the community that we all, we all live within. So at the university, we do place a very heavy emphasis on relationships and we work on relationships right across the student journey. So from applicant stage, um, you know, initial inquiry, applicant and across the journey, we have student mentors, we have a, a peer mentor scheme for students. And obviously, like many universities, we have a very strong personal tutor system. Um, we also seek to engender uh, an environment and a culture where diversity uh, is a strength, that it matters, that it's important for students to be exposed to people from different backgrounds um, and to talk to people that have had different experiences. Um, and we hope that with all of that wraparound support, actually that's enough to allow any student, whatever their background, to succeed. But actually we know, and you will all know in your own institutions, that every year, despite everything that we do, we lose several hundred students, individuals who came to university full of hope, full of excitement and enthusiasm about what university would be. And then it turns out not to be what they expected. Sometimes that is beyond our control, things get in the way for students that we can't control. But sometimes, you know, we can't but help believe there was more that we could do. Uh, but no matter how many policies and processes we put in place, actually our success is very, very dependent on the quality of the relationships that students establish, not only with fellow students, but obviously uh, with academics and professional services staff that are there to support them. And so ensuring that we as professionals get to know our students, that we understand their experiences, their motivations, their hopes, their fears, um, and that we then seek to personalise the support that we give is absolutely crucial uh, to their success and ensuring that they know that that's what we're doing because actually we really value them as individuals. And when you're an unconfident 18 year old coming from a low income household or from a community where very few or no people have been to university, where you are the first in your, in your family to go to university, it can feel a very intimidating uh, place, no matter how friendly we want to make it and try to make it. And you will look at your tutors and all of the professionals in universities and feel that they are confident and successful people and that they have always been those people. Um, and I think that actually, you know, for all of us, you know, when we look at our colleagues, we make lots of assumptions about where they come from and their backgrounds. Um, and why they've got the level of confidence that they've got. And, you know, I think it is very good for us, as Liz has indicated, to share uh, with our students where we've come from and the journey that we've come on. You know, we, we don't end up, you know, we were not born to the places that we end up. You know, our, our position is the result of probably many decades of the journey and ensuring that we share those experiences with with students, I think, can really help them to feel that things are more achievable. Um, so I know Liz is encouraging all of us today through this project um, to share our own story. So I just thought I'd spend a few minutes sharing my own personal story. Um, so I'm the youngest of seven children, um, and I was brought up in a council house in Manchester in the north of England. Um, both of my parents were incredibly intelligent. Um, but both of them were actually really denied um, any formal education. Uh, my mum, because um, she, due to ill health really, between the ages of four and 12, so for eight years, um, she was in a convalescence home being cared for. Um, and my dad was born in a working class family in Belfast in Northern Ireland. Um, and he was incredibly bright, um, so much so that at the age of 12, um, he was told by his school that there was nothing more that they could teach him um, because he knew more than the teachers knew. So he was effectively sent away from school at 12. So as a result of that, they both ended up in manual jobs. You know, my mum was a cleaner, my dad was a road sweeper. Um, so in, noth in nothing else, I've got very strong cleaning genes um, and a very clean house. Um, 
and as I say, I'm the youngest of seven. I have obviously six siblings, um, but there are only two of us, myself and my sister immediately above me, who went to university. Um, and again, that's not absolutely not about intellect or capability. Uh, it's only about opportunity. Um, you know, it, it, the time was such that when my siblings were 16, actually they didn't really have any option but to go out to work and start to earn money. By the time we got to my immediately elder sister and myself, there was more opportunity for us. It did seem like there was more choice for us. Um, and actually crucially, and I think this is really crucial, for both of us, there were people outside of our family, um, people who had different experiences, people who had been to university and understood that world, who really encouraged us to think about that as, as a possibility for us. And of course, it was at a time when we did get grants and financial support from the state, um, and we didn't have to pay our own fees. Uh, and that again was absolutely crucial for us. Um, and so I think, you know, for me, looking back, and actually throughout my whole career, um, the most important thing to me and my success has been about people who have had confidence in me, who have en encouraged me to do things which I probably would never have had the confidence to do um, without others' belief in me. Um, so I think actually for us now as people who, you know, are in positions of influence, um, recognising that and recognising the impact, that just saying to somebody, you can do it, I have faith in you, I'm confident in you, can have on somebody whose confidence probably, you know, is not where it needs to be. These are probably not people who are born to feel confident, who are born to feel that they have an entitlement. Um, and actually, if those of us um, who have benefited from the system can do things to help others, um, I think we not only help those individuals, but we help their families, the communities that they live in, and, the, and society as a whole. It does feel more difficult now, I think. It feels like we live, certainly in the UK, in less of a meritocracy, that social mobility is harder. Um, so although we've opened up universities and you know, we have widened access and more people do go to university, the ability for people beyond universities to, to succeed feels more challenging. Um, and therefore it is you know, ever more important for the sake of the whole of society that those of us who can help those individuals to feel that university is a place for them, a place where they belong and a place where they can excel, um, that will really position them to make a huge contribution to you know, their communities in the future. So, you know, I think this is an enormously important topic. I thank you for your engagement in it today. Um, and I hope you really have a fantastic day. Thanks, Liz, back to you. Thank you so much, Linda. That was great. And thank you very much for sharing your story. I think it really is inspiration to people to hear that, that not everybody was born with the proverbial silver spoon in their, in their mouth. So, yeah, great. Uh, thank you. And, and I'm really happy now that we're going to introduce uh, Dr. Marika Mowes, who's going to speak about the I Belong project. So Marika is based at the Erasmus University in the Netherlands and has been leading this project for the last two and a half years or so. Thank you, Marika. Thank you, Liz. Um, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining our online I Belong event today. My name is Marike Mewese and I am an Associate Professor in Educational Sciences at Erasmus University Rotterdam, which is a large research university in an urban area in the Netherlands. And I'm involved in this course program since 2012. And as of April 1st, I am the director of our bachelor program in pedag pedagogical sciences, in which we have implemented the I Belong program uh, in 2019. I did my PhD on the role of psychosocial factors in explaining similarities and differences 
in the academic success of diverse students in higher education. And sense of belonging was, and still is, a central concept in my research. And it was when I was doing my PhD in the field of diversity in higher education that I started realizing how privileged I had been as a university student in my time at university. I studied psychology at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And my father is a psychologist as well, and he graduated from this same university. Nevertheless, I considered my first month at, as a university student difficult. I moved to a student room in Utrecht, about an hour travel by public transport from home. I did not know any fellow students, and I was quite overwhelmed by the number of psychology students in these large lecture halls, and also by lecturers not knowing my name, so not knowing me in person. On Fridays, I traveled home and spent the weekends crying on the couch with my parents and my younger sisters. I was, however, in the fortunate situation that my father exactly knew what I was going through. So he comforted me in saying that my emotions and my experiences as a first year student in the transition into higher education were quite normal, as this is a very challenging period for all students. But if back then I would have only imagined the additional challenges other students were experiencing, for example, because they were the first in their families studying in higher education. And today still, many students from various backgrounds deal with challenges in the higher education learning environment, which is not always perceived as inclusive. So I am very proud to be the project leader of the Erasmus Plus Strategic Partnership Program in Higher Education, which we named hashtag I belong. And in this program, I collaborate with engaged and expert colleagues in the field of sense of belonging in education. And we share an ambition to promote the inclusiveness of higher education for all students. Sense of belonging is a fundamental human need. So if one does not feel a sense of belonging, it can negatively impact motivation and success. Belonging thus underpins student success. The I Belong project is an innovative program of evidence-informed interventions to improve students' sense of belonging and success in higher education, with a focus on, but not limited to, ethnic minority students and first-generation entrants in higher education. And to promote students' sense of belonging and success in higher education, we have formed this so-called strategic partnership in higher education, uh, consisting of four research universities across Europe, an expert center for diversity policy, and a knowledge in innovation center. And today, together, we will share, as the I Belong team, um, our experiences and also how moving to online education challenged us as a consortium. Student sense of belonging is nurtured through their course of study and is developed, at least in part, through interactions with peers and staff. So the I Belong team developed a suite of interventions that operate at the level of the course program, engaging first year students, student peer mentors and the staff team to promote sense of belonging uh, of diverse students in higher education. And our activities include dialogue about diversity, belonging and success. And this activity or intervention we named the Dialogue Days. It involves also staff engagement with and reflection on diversity and changes to practice, which we named the team teacher reflections. And it involves student peer mentors who are building a community, and that we called 
the Student Community Mentoring Program. Sense of belonging is strongly connected to the physical space, so the space where learning occurs. And promoting belonging is challenging when learning is shifted fully or partially online. So COVID-19 really challenged the work of the I Belong team, as all partner universities needed to close their doors for staff and students following national COVID-19 measures. And as a consequence, we need to redesign and redevelop all I Belong activities so that they could be implemented in online or blended education. And as an I Belong team, we have learned that nurturing belonging during lockdown learning really requires the engagement of the full team. So the whole team approach, which is also a central topic of today, entails students, student peer mentors, teachers, support staff, but also the management level. And we have learned that the timing of the interventions is critical. So you really need to start promoting belonging right at the beginning of the academic year when first year students enroll. And it's very important to continue conversations and activities throughout the academic year. And the interventions need to be embedded in the students' curriculum to really create impact and guarantee continuation. And the same goes for continuing the dialogue in staff teams. So make sure you embed team reflection on diversity and inclusion in your regular staff meetings, because otherwise the discussions will get lost in the daily uh, teaching practices. And last but not least, also emphasized earlier today, share your personal experiences. And this goes for students, and this goes for staff as well. And maybe even more importantly, it goes for the dialogue which students and staff have together. So today we will be sharing details and experiences of our I Belong interventions that we have developed and that we needed to redesign and redevelop to um, implement them in online and blended education. So you will be experiencing some of the activities that we delivered online, uh, for example, from the student staff dialogue day and the team teacher reflection. So we invite you as our audience to share your personal experiences and to actively participate in our activities and discussions. For example, in the chat we have created and also in the breakout rooms uh, for which you are invited later today. I would like to thank Liz Thomas from Edgehill University for hosting this online one day event. And of course, my colleagues from the I Belong team for their support and their contributions in preparing and organizing this event. And today's event cannot succeed without the active participation and contribution of our own students, the student mentors and also our staff colleagues. So thank you very much, the entire team, for our whole team approach and enjoy today. Thank you. Liz, back to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed, Marika, for, for giving a brilliant introduction and overview to, to the hashtag I Belong project. And you will all learn much more about this during the course of the day. And as, as Marika has already talked about, we will, we will engage you in many of the activities that, that we have been developing over the last few years and refining as, as the context and circumstances have changed. I'm going to be speaking now for a few minutes about the work that we did about the I Belong project at Edge Hill University. As unfortunately, my colleague, Dr. Dawn Warren is not able to be with us. So you will get a somewhat different presentation from me than you would have had from Dawn. So 
Edge Hill led on the development of the dialogue days. And as Marika explained, these brought together the staff and the students from a particular course of study. And we organized one at the start of the academic year and one towards the end of the second semester for first year students. And we brought together these people to have a conversation about diversity, belonging and success. And to really put out on the table or in the open the issues that we thought were important to help students understand that we valued diversity and recognize that it was sometimes challenging, but also to point to the importance of belonging and success. And it's not just about working hard, but it is about, about being part of the community within your university. In the first year of the project, we worked with, the, with primary education and it's a program that has more than 300 first year students. And we were given a tiered lecture theatre to work in. So this created its own challenges about how we would create an engaging kind of active learning experience. But we developed a range of activities and we included these ideas about storytelling. And our student mentors were a really central part to the process. And they, they kind of shared their experiences. Initially, they said they didn't have anything to say. Um, but, but then as we talked about it, they realized they did have stories to talk about. And they also worked with small groups of students and helped to create a cohort experience. Um, one of the things we did with the students was we encouraged them to take photographs and tell us what helped them, what, what made them feel like they belonged. Um, and we then we reviewed them again at the end of the year. And one of the things that was striking was how people's, um, people's sense of what was important to their belonging had changed over that first year experience. So here are a few photos. We asked the students to also give us a caption. And so there were quite a few photographs about friends. And oops, they, they're friends. And this is a photograph of a kitchen on campus where the students live in their flat. And it's here that they socialize around their kitchen table. And then this second picture is the Faculty of Education at Edge Hill University. And I think this is really important because as the caption says, this is where I will become a primary school teacher. So that connects to the idea that it's really important that you're going to, that your education helps you to achieve your future goals. Then this picture is of the Catalyst Centre at Edge Hill University, which combines the library, but also a whole range of academic and pastoral support services. And I think, sorry, I've got a timer on this by mistake. I think that um, uh, this was a really important part of it, that students felt that support was available if they wanted it. And then finally, there were quite a few photographs about feeling safe and secure. Um, and this is the security lodge at Edge Hill University. But that sense that you need to feel safe on campus really came through strongly through the photographs that the students shared at the start of the year. Um, one of the activities we, we did in that tiered lecture theatre, which you can see there, um, is, is something which we called aeroplane um, snowballs and aeroplanes. So you can see the aeroplanes flying across the screen there on the top left hand side. And what we, what we asked students to do was to say, I want you to know this about me and you can support me to be successful by and they simply had to write those two statements on a piece of paper and then they screwed them up and made them into a snowball or they folded them more carefully and made them into an aeroplane and threw them to the front of the lecture theatre. Um, and you can see in the photograph there, one of our student mentors, Luke, and, and so then they collected up all these pieces of paper and we were able to read them. And what I think was really powerful about this was that students shared um, really important things about how they were feeling at the start of the academic year and crucially and you can see on the right hand side of the screen the ways in which they could be supported to be successful um, and so then we took all this information and we shared it with personal tutors 
And some students have actually identified themselves, even though we allowed them to be anonymous doing this activity or encouraged them to be anonymous. And so this meant then there were really important early indicators of, of students who were feeling that they needed some additional support or contact with the teaching team. And then Dawn Warren, who, who was supposed to be speaking now instead of me, um, took all of this and, and saw that there was a really common theme about students feeling anxious and then wanting to be asked if they were okay. So she put in place an intervention called just ask if I if just ask if I'm okay. And and basically tutors emailed students or texted students and they were had to give a numerical score to say if they were okay or not. And any of those with a low score were indicating that they wanted someone to contact them. And so this is a quick kind of way of catching up with students. And so that really shows how this project, this one day intervention, contributed to some of the activity going forward across the whole year. Um, in the second year, we'd intended to work with a different programme, but we, um, we were invited to, to work with other programmes within the Faculty of Education. And I think it was really important that we had the managerial support to, to roll it out across the, across the faculty. Um, and we were able to engage the program leaders and, get, and identify ways in which they could adapt the I Belong activities and embed them into their own programs, as we really needed them to own it and make sense of it. So we, we adapted and developed a blended approach and we stretched the activities over the first semester, rather than started with a one day event, which was both online and in person. And then we had online activities throughout the first semester and we linked it to the development of academic skills. And program leaders and year leaders and students shared a whole range of stories about not fitting in at higher education, about leaving higher education, about coming to England from Poland and studying, and even one member of staff who talked about being a witch. And my own story is perhaps the fact that when I started at higher education, I felt I felt very lacking in confidence and I went to seminars and was very reluctant to speak. And when it was my turn to present a paper, I would, I would read the paper and not look up and not make eye contact and, and found it really hard to participate in the discussions. And now today I spend a lot of time talking to large groups of people. Um, and, and I think that it shows that, it, that we don't all kind of start in the place that we want to get to in the end. And that idea about having low self-confidence and developing that through our education experience really resonated with some of the students on our programs of study.